HTC are back. And in this video, I'm going to give you the full lowdown on their new PC VR headset, Vive Focus Vision. Now this headset has DNA with the Vive Focus 3, which is their commercial prosumer grade VR headset used for training. Now you may not realize this, but HTC have been in the commercial space for quite some time and being very successful at it as well, including firefighter training, market and design, so things like building engines and cars, that kind of thing, therapy and rehabilitation, learning education, pilot training, but also the Vi Focus 3 is used for the police service as well. Pretty amazing stuff, I think you'll agree. But why am I telling you this? Well, it's simply because the new Vision series is exactly the same headset as their Vive Focus 3 commercial grade headset, which is both a blessing and a curse, which I'll explain in a moment. Because this headset is going to have a DisplayPort connection. That means you're going to get beautiful, rich PC VR visuals without any compression, without any artifacts. And let me tell you, I know the Quest 3 is a fantastic headset and we, you know, many people use it, but you cannot beat a DisplayPort connection headset when it comes to flight simulators and race sims and, you know, real full fat PC VR experiences. There is just definitely a big difference. Not only that, it is actually easier for your GPU to handle a DisplayPort connection than having to deal with lots of encoding. So anyway, let's just now go through the specification. This headset has built-in eye tracking and motorized IPD adjustment. Pretty damn cool. Now in terms of the chipset, because I haven't really mentioned this yet because it's not really applicable to the channel, but it can do standalone gaming as well because it has an XR2 chipset. It's not the new XR2 Gen 2 chipset. However, I don't really mind about that because all that chip really is essentially doing is powering the tracking because you don't need external base stations for this. It has its own tracking built in. I'm totally fine with that. But if you really so desire, you can play probably Beat Saber or any standalone games. But as I say, that's an area that I'm not really so concerned about because this channel is all about PC VR flight simulation and I'm pretty confident that 99% of the people watching this is more excited for the specification using it as a display port PC VR headset but you can use it as a standalone device it does have a battery but here's the thing Unlike the Pimax Crystal, that battery won't wear down over a long session. You can pull an all-nighter on this thing and it will always remain charged. That's really important. And even if you do use it as a standalone headset, it has a 15-minute internal battery. So you can hot swap the battery if you so desire. So perhaps in the future there could be a market for a wireless solution for those who really do still enjoy flying, you know, with a wireless uh, PC VR experience. Because I know there's many out there that don't like a wire. This gives you the option to do both. Now before I do move on and talk about the hardware specs, I think it's also worth noting that this Android software solution that they're using for the Vive Vision XR, well, it's a lot more open unlike the closed platforms of the Apple Vision Pro and the Meta software, which essentially means you've got a lot more power, a lot more customization and more flexibility, much like an Android phone where you can, you know, download different software and it will allow you to do that compared to say an Apple device. So let's now talk about the pass-through, which in this day and age, mixed reality is a must with any new VR headset moving forward. And the Vive Focus Vision XR, which is the full name, I must keep saying that, <laughs> has dual 16 megapixel color cameras. And the software is actually quite nice because you can set up your boundary much like a Quest by painting your surroundings. You can also add in different pieces of furniture like a table so that you're aware of your surroundings. 
However, in terms of the pass-through, I must say it's okay, it's pretty damn sharp, but it is let down due to those lenses, which I'm going to get onto in a minute. But the actual colour of the pass-through with that depth sensor is actually pretty damn good. So, in terms of the resolution, it is a combined 5K resolution across both eyes. And it is an LCD panel. It doesn't have any backlighting, so it's not mini LED, it's not QLED either. So that is one area that is a shame, because you won't get local dimming with this headset. Oh, so annoying, but never mind. In essence, this is the same panel as the Vi Pro 2. And things don't really get any better when we talk about the lenses, which are for now. There is a small sweet spot, unfortunately. If you're in it, you're absolutely fine, but things can get blurry pretty damn quick. So that is a great shame. Now, even though the auto IPD does help because it puts you straight into that sweet spot a lot easier than you would find with the Vi Pro 2, there is quite a bit of glare and you can see those concentric rings on the outer edges. I actually tried the Vi Vision without the facial interface and I just tried it with basically my head into the lenses without any facial interface. And you know what? It was actually really impressive. Gone was the small sweet spot, gone was most of the glare, and it become actually very impressive with that super sharp display. It was really, really good. It would be absolutely fantastic if a third party solution could provide an alternative facial gasket and face cushion, or perhaps HDC could provide one in the future because if you can get really close to those Fresnel lenses, believe it or not, I think it looks really good. While it wasn't edge to edge clarity even in the sweet spot, it was more than adequate. But unfortunately with the standard facial interface, for me there was plenty of god rays, the sweet spot was far too small and I did find the whole experience incredibly blurry overall which is such a great shame and I really want HTC to succeed here because actually the build quality of the headset is really absolutely fantastic. It has active cooling. You've got so many options here as I said before with the eye tracking, hand tracking, full body tracking as well with their extra sensors. The form factor of the headset, while it's not the most comfortable headset I've ever worn, it's not too bad at all and I really do like its design. And I also really like how it's got active cooling. So unlike the Vi Pro 2, you feel really cool in this headset. And of course with the pass-through, which is pretty damn good, but I just wonder how much better it could have looked if it had pancake lenses. Now I appreciate that pancake lenses are extremely expensive to make. And also consider that with pancake lenses, they would have to find a new display. And that is because pancake lenses sap a lot of those photons to your eyes. So they would need a brighter display in order to give you a decent image. There's a lot of R&D that goes into making pancake lenses and it's not as easy as you guys think. And I just think at this point in time, HTC are not able to be able to fund that kind of investment. But I really am hopeful that the next PC VR headset from HTC will have custom pancake lenses because ideally all they need to do is keep the vision exactly as it is now, because I think the form factor is fine, the sensors and technology is fantastic. If they could just upgrade the display and pancake lenses, this won't just be a great headset. This would be an absolute killer VR headset and it would disrupt the market. Now before I forget, the audio on this headset is very good. It is piped through the strap. I think it's even better than the Quest 3, simply because it's louder and retains a decent amount of bass for this type of design. So well done there to HDC, because integrated audio, for me at least, is very important and it's missing from many VR headsets. Now let's just quickly talk about performance. As you can see here, I'm running it in MSFS 2024 and it does run better than say the Pimax Crystal because of course the display resolution isn't quite so high. However, the display resolution, which is, let me get this right, 2448 by 2448 and a refresh rate of 90 hertz or 120 hertz, 
Well, it's still very high and more than adequate. I'm totally fine with this resolution. Even for the next few years, I would be totally fine if that resolution was combined, as I say, with pancake lenses. But I won't go into that anymore because I've obviously just said that. But what it means is you do get better performance. And I really do like the streamlined Vive Hub software as well. And it has OpenXR support. And it's just a very sleek, very clean and very simple software solution which enables you to either stream, which by the way, the actual clarity is hugely uh, degraded in streaming mode, but obviously with the PC VR connection, which is what we would do, it does look very nice. And the colors of the display, before I forget as well, are very good. I remember them being very good with the Vibe Pro 2. And for an LCD display, this is the best I've come across. Now let's just talk about the field of view, which reminds me, funny enough, of the Vario Aero. It's quite a letterbox style field of view. And again, very similar to that of the Vi Pro 2. And the figures that I got for the horizontal field of view was only around 112 degrees with the stock facial interface. And for the vertical, well, it was only about 94. And that was stretching it, as you can see here, using this tool. So for those of you out there that don't really want to go the Pimax route and you're quite happy with your Reva G2 but you just want a replacement and you don't mind for now lenses, then this could be your next VR headset because it's solid build quality, it's going to last you a very long time, it's got HDC's years and years of VR experience. If you don't mind putting up with those for now lenses, then the rest of the headset is really very very good but unfortunately for most of you out there i just cannot recommend this headset going into 2025 unfortunately now a massive shout out to htc for sending this across to me and as you've seen from this review all my opinions are always my own and it doesn't make any difference if someone sends me anything for free However, I do think that this is an exciting headset and perhaps could show where HTC could be going in the future. It's a frustrating headset. On one hand, it has fantastic form factor, great visuals in terms of its sharpness. I really like the active cooling, the eye tracking, hand tracking, the decent pass through, great software, really good tracking. It's got the whole package apart from those Fresnel lenses. And the funny thing is, now that I've been using it solid for the past couple of days, it's almost like I've got used to it. But when I go back again to the likes of the Quest 3 and the Pimax Crystal, then it's like looking back into the future. It's just such a massive difference. Then there's the price. This headset is around a thousand pounds, well, 999 pounds, but with a DisplayPort connection, you're looking at 1,158 pounds. And I don't even know if that's including any import tax and of course shipping costs. So it is quite a lot of money, but it is quite a lot of headset too. And in some ways I am tempted to keep with it for a while and see how I feel about it in say another month from now, especially as the software is progressing. But at the end of the day, as I've said before, there really is no getting away from those Fresnel lenses, especially as they are dual stack designed and the concentric rings and the glare is quite a big turn off. So that will do for my review of the Vive Focus Vision XR. Thank you for watching. Please do let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on this headset. Please feel free to subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.